So today I'm going to finish up talking about um, series solutions. Um, and so as far as we're going to go on this topic is just um, for uh, ordinary points like we've been doing before and um, with a polynomial coefficient. So just actually really a polynomial coefficient with a pretty small degree. So I think we ended last time in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of Aries equation. And so this was, I'm gonna make a little root here. Aries equation, y double prime minus xy equals zero. <clears throat> and so we were trying to find a series solution to this. So um, because our, I'll just write these out again, p of x equals one, q of x equals zero, <clears throat> r of x equals negative x. And so because p of x was not zero anywhere, every point is an ordinary point. So we can solve these using the methods that we've seen so far. So we're assuming, as we do for series solutions, that they're of the form, the sum from n equals zero to infinity a n x to the n. And so for y prime, we have the sum from n equals one to infinity a n you take the derivative n times a n x to the n minus one. And then for y double prime, we have the sum from n equals two to infinity n times n minus one a n x to the n minus two. So those are, those are the only ones we need for this. You might notice that we could do the same type of technique or it doesn't have to be a second, second order ODE or second order linear ODE could be higher order. We just take more derivatives and that's true. So uh, let's just plug these in. I'm gonna say that we have sum from n equals two to infinity n times n minus one, a n to n minus two equals x times, I'm just adding this over to the other side n equals zero to infinity a n x to the n. So this left-hand side, I'm gonna rewrite so the generic terms have x to the n as their x term. So uh, that means I'm gonna replace n with n plus two. So to compensate, instead of starting at two, I'll start at zero. n is replaced with n plus two. N is replaced with n plus two here, so this becomes n plus one, a n plus two, x to the n. So just a shift of index there. You get an x to the n. And then on the other side, I have, well, let's do this one up here. So I'm gonna rewrite it a couple times. So first I'm gonna move that x in. That makes this an x to the n plus one. And now I wanna compensate um, I want to replace n with n minus one. And so um, to compensate for that, I'm going to start from one, go to infinity, a n minus one, x to the n. And so you'll see that if we start from zero here, we get a zero x to the one. And if we start from one here, we get a zero x to the one. So series works out to be the same, okay? So I'm gonna just take this one and move it down here. Only for the sake of uh, easy reference. And now we have uh, matching coefficients. 
So what do we get from this? We get, first of all, let's match the coefficients. N plus two times N plus one, A to the, A, sorry, A subscript N plus two equals A N minus one. So I'm going to uh, do this little rewriting step that I, I normally do. Uh, first, let's, uh, instead of saying, well, let's say how to get a n plus two from some expression for the previous a n's. So just dividing n plus two over n plus two times n plus one over the other side, get a n plus two equals a n minus one over plus two times n plus one. And now I'm gonna do another rewriting step. Um, I want to say what is a n in terms of previous ones. So instead of starting from a n plus two and looking at previous terms, I'm gonna start with a n and look at previous terms. So if I replace n plus two with n, I'm really replacing n with n minus two. So this is, a n minus three, n plus two I've replaced with n, and n plus one becomes n minus one. And you can always double check and plug in a number and see if you get the same thing. So if I wanted, if I put a n equals zero here, and this would be a two equals, well, uh, we run into a little problem there because we would have a n minus. So let's say a n equals three, or sorry, n equals uh, one. So this is a three. They're much better. This is a zero over three times two. And what would that be over here? That would be n equals three. So we get a three equals a zero over three times two. And you see, it's a little bit easier to plug things into this one than it is to this one. So well, that's the purpose of that last rewriting step. Now we do have to take into consideration, um, what do we do for, for small values of n? Um, and one thing that we didn't work out here is that when we have, let's look at this equation that we got, or uh, I've written a lot here, so I wanna highlight the, uh, the important part, is this right here. So, uh, Looking back at this equation, um, we have this uh, situation right here where this, this recurrence relation doesn't start until n equals one, right? Because at n equals zero, this one on the right doesn't have any terms showing up. So we need to look at that situation. So when n equals zero, we have two times one times a2 equals, so it should be a one there. It won't matter, but on the other side, we have zero, right? Because the n equals zero term on the right-hand side, there isn't one, it's just zero. So from this, we get A2 is equal to zero. And then we have um, for uh, A0 and A1, there's no recurrence relation, so A0 and A1 are arbitrary. And we get our two uh, arbitrary uh, values that we expect from a second order linear ODE. We expect there to be two arbitrary ones, right? Like we did before with all of our other methods for the homogeneous equation, you get a C1 and C2. So A0 and A1 will, will function in the same way. Okay. So um, we want to uh, figure out uh, how we can get the uh, general terms, the AIs. So let's start by looking at this relationship right here. Every term is, is given to us in terms of the one three, three spots back. So if we have um, if we have a zero, then allows us to get a three, and if we have a three, that allows us to get a six, 
We have a six that allows us to get a nine and so on. A one gives us a four. A four gives us a seven, so on. And then a two is equal to zero. That's what we determined from our, the equation that gave us a recurrence relation. So that means that if we plug that into our recurrence relation, we get a five is equal to zero, a eight is equal to zero, and so on. So we're really just looking at these two sequences of coefficients right here. All right, so a three, we'll start with a three. This will be equal to a zero over n, which is three, times n minus one, which is two. So we get that this is one six a zero. So next would be a six. This is a three over six times five. Okay, n times n minus one. And so this is one thirtieth times a three, which is one six a zero. Now, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm sort of writing out what the actual term would be. Let me do that at the end. So this will be a zero. Well, let's just leave it like this for now. So this one will be uh, a three over six times five. So this is a zero over six times five times Six times five times three times two. And then in the same way, we get a nine equals a six over nine times eight, which is a zero over nine times eight times six times five, three times two. And uh, this continues on. Now, if you've looked at the, the web work problems for these, you'll see that they really only want the first few terms. So we can do something like this and then just figure out what these terms will be. So this is 1, 6, a 0. This is 1, 1 80th. A zero, and this is, oh geez. <laughs> this is probably where you get your calculator. Hmm, question mark. So uh, that would be our first few terms. And now let's look at uh, the ones starting with A1. So we would have A1 is arbitrary, and then A4 would be, we would get that in terms of that. So that A4 equals, let's say we're just gonna, we're just going to go up to this point. So we have uh, we have a zero, a zero is arbitrary, and then a three, and then a six. So we've got the first three terms there. Okay. Now on this this segment, this will be a one over four times three. So that's one twelve a one. And then a seven will be a four over seven times six. This is a one over seven times six times four times three, which is, hmm, can I do this one in my head? 420 plus 96, no? 420 plus 84, so that's 504. Don't put that in a cal into your calculator check. Okay, and then uh, A1 was arbitrary. Okay. So uh, one route, one possible thing that someone might ask you on an exam or something like that, 
is to uh, get the um, get the general coefficients. And so if we have uh, things of the form, these are of the form 3k, or k is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on, right? So a 3k is equal to a0 over, and we'll do it in the reverse order now, 2 times 3 times 5 times 6 times dot, 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 3k minus 1. No, that's wrong. 3k minus 1 times 3k. Right. So this is the general formula for how these work out. And I'm not going to go through a step of proving this with induction. You kind of saw how that works out before. Um, and then for a3k plus 1, we have a1 over 3 times 4, 6 times 7, dot, 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 3k plus 1. 3k. So this is the general form for those coefficients. And then a3k plus 2 is just always equal to 0. So this is the general formula for all of the coefficients. And we can put this all together and get a solution. So if I want the general solution, what I will have is y of x. Remember now, just for the sake of convenience, uh, we're, we're letting x be our independent variable. We will have, we're gonna factor the a0 out of every, every one of the terms here. And so we'll have a0 times something. The zero, You know, just a few more days and we'll be done with this. Okay, come on. One plus, so that's the zero order term, right? That's the constant term. So it's a zero times one, and then a three times x cubed. So that's one six x cubed, and then one one eightieth x to the sixth, and these terms continue. And then we have the a, the, the ones that originate from a1. So the first one is the degree one term, which is just x times a1 plus 1 12th uh, times, this is the fourth order term, so x to the fourth plus and over five, 504, if that's correct, times x to the seventh, and then continuing on. And then for the, uh, the ones originating from A2, we have all zeros. Okay. Now, if you're looking at a web work problem like this, they'll say, give two solutions. And this actually, you see from this form that these, these two solutions will form uh, an independent set. Everything can be written in terms of the near combination of them. So this would be the first answer. You can plug something like this into that question, and that's what web work would be satisfied with that. And then the second piece would be this piece right here. So we have every solution can be written as the linear combination of two solutions. Y1 of X equals 1 plus 1 sixth. I'm going to call it Y0 because it's starting with the A0 term. The subscripts match up. And then Y1 of X is equal to X plus 1 12th X to the fourth plus 1 over 504 to the seventh plus so on. So in this, in this notation, Y of X. I'll just write.
y is equal to c1 y1 plus c2 y2. Where now c1 is a0 and c2, and I wrote y1 and y2, I should write c0 y0 and c1 y1. They're just names. It's these two things, right? So that gives us our uh, solution. Now uh, we could um, work out the uh, the Ronskian and show that this is uh, that these are sufficiently independent solutions, um, but we're not going to do that. We'll skip that for today. Now, here's a, an interesting uh, twist on this problem. We found a solution centered at, uh, this is a, okay, come on. This is a series solution centered at x equals zero, right? All of the terms in here are of the form x minus zero the n, so x to the n. So let's center it at a different location. Let's center this at x equals one. How can we do this? Well, now our general series, well, let me write down what the equation is again, first of all. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to write it in this form because this is the form that we're going to try to solve it in. And so now we're looking for solutions of the form n equals zero to infinity, a n x minus one, b n. All right, so um, let's uh, do derivative. Well, this works out to be just the same as before. Except now we instead of x, we have x minus one. And we put this into the equation and we get one from n equals two to infinity. Actually, let's go ahead and do that rewriting step. We want the generic terms to be x minus one to the n. So we'll do this exact same rewriting as it was before, just with x minus one. Sorry, I left out the a. Left out the coefficient, maybe the most important part. Okay. And then on the other side, we have x times sum from n equals zero to infinity, a n, x minus one, the n. So this means that we have to move that x into our uh, into our series there. But how do you do that? Because it's not an x minus one, it's an x. So it's just it's not just the power of x minus one. Well, we do that old algebra trick, which is we add something and then immediately subtract it again. Except this time we're subtracting something and then adding it again. So x is really x minus one plus one, right? Once you do it, it feels so obvious that you're gonna feel silly, but uh, it works out, it gets results. So uh, let's not worry about it. 
All right, and now I distribute this uh, these two terms. First, this term, x minus one times n equals zero to infinity, a n x minus one, the n, and now we have no problem. And then this one will be n equals zero to infinity. This is just times one, so nothing changes. And I'll do something which I probably shouldn't do, which is I'll just erase that and make this one plus one. Save a little space. Save it, save a little electronic paper. Okay. Now uh, I have to do another uh, re indexing because the um, the exponent here is n plus one, and I want that to be n. So instead of starting from zero, I'm gonna start from one. Because that would be my first exponent. And then this must be n minus one, x minus one, the n. And I'll rewrite the other one to change. And finally, just to, to make my life easier, we could do this in our head, but let's write it out. n equals one to infinity. We'll combine these two. Um, no, let's do it like let's do it like this. Just to make explicit what's going on here. Um, we'll do it all in one step. So this, the left-hand side here, this is, so I'm going to have this n plus one. So I'm going to have the n equals zero terms kind of by themselves. I'll do that first. So the n equals zero term here is two, a, uh, n plus two. So that's two, a, two, x minus one to the zero plus sum from n equals one to infinity, n plus two times n plus one, a n plus two, x minus one to the n equals, and now I'll grab the n equals one term here, or n equals zero term here, a zero, x minus one to the zero, plus sum from n equals one, infinity, a n minus one, now let's combine these two, a n minus one plus a n, x minus one, the n, all right, and this is the, uh, I went through a lot of steps of rewriting there, but these are all completely for the sake of making it, e making it easier to write out the recurrent. So this is just a, it was a little bit of extra work that's gonna save us a little bit of headache now when we have to uh, put this all together. So when we have um, n equals zero, what we have is two a two equals a zero, or in other words, a2 equals one half a zero. And then from then on, what do we have? We have, splitting it up like this makes it easy to see what's gonna happen for higher values. Uh, what do we have? We have n plus two times n plus one, a n plus two equals a n minus one plus a n. I don't need parentheses anymore. a n minus one plus a n. And 
and I'll do uh, my couple steps of rewriting to simplify <clears throat> the final step. The final step will just be plugging in values of n and seeing what we get. So um, I'll get a n plus two equals a n minus one plus a n over n plus two and n plus one. Excuse me. And then finally, um, let's go down here and rewrite this as a n equals lowering all of the indices by two, I get a n minus three plus a n minus two. <coughs> Sorry, just give me one second. Be great if people could do that in real life. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> okay. So this is what we have. Um, our our way to get new terms and uh, based on previous ones. So what do we have here? Well, we have um, a zero and a one are going to be arbitrary because we have nothing pinning those down. But then once we have those, we can get all of the other ones. There's one exception, and that is when when n equals 2, the recurrence relation depends on a minus one. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but we're making the assumption that there, there are no negative terms. And so, uh, well, we could do something like say, a minus one equals zero, question mark. Or we could just rely on this relationship right here that we got. So we can get a2 just by looking at that, it's one half a zero. And if you see, if you if you use uh, put a little arrow there, if you put if you put zero in for that, what you get is exactly this thing again. So two different ways of looking at the same thing. Doesn't really matter which one, which way we look at it in this situation. Though we can always check by looking at our relationship like this and see if it it works out. Okay. Anyway, time to start getting the coefficient. So uh, every coefficient will be able to get it in terms of the ones two and three. I know Zoom. I don't have to do that on. Okay. So two and three back in the sequence. So if we're looking for a three, that's the first one that we haven't already determined. Uh, this will be a zero plus a one over three times two. And then a four will be equal to, oh, let's take a step back. This is one sixth a zero plus one sixth a two. But we know a2, it's one half a0. So this is one six a0. On this one, I'm not going to bother trying to write out the, uh, the, the general coefficient. It's going to become very complicated. So we're going we're gonna to be satisfied with getting a few of the first, the first few terms. In practice, this is what you would do. You would, you would get the first few terms. You would make some kind of argument to say that, um, as you add more and more terms, you get you, the first n terms, the first k terms would give you a close enough solution to the thing that you're actually looking for that you would be within error tolerances. And so you would just compute those first however many terms. 
this is the way you would do it in practice. Okay. Well, this is, uh, made a mistake here, didn't I? Okay, to make mistakes, as long as you eventually notice, as long as someone eventually notices. Should be A0 plus A1. Okay. No rewriting step. <clears throat> A4. This should be A1 plus A2 over 4 times 3. Actually, I, looking at the formula, I can see a nice way to uh, remember this as I'm going through the, uh, let's use rainbow, going through this uh, process. So if this is my n, so 4, I'm going to go 4 times 3, 2, 1. It goes in a nice order like that, so I won't forget now. Anyway, this is 1 12 A1 plus 1 12 A2. And that now is 112A1 plus 124A0. We've got it in terms of A0. A5 is going to be 5, 4, 3, 2. And so, uh, Let's see, this will be 1 20th times A3 plus 1 20th times A2. And that will be 1 1 20th A1. Let's do both of them. 1 1 20th A0, 1 1 20th A1. And then 1 20th times A2, which is 1 half A0. So 1 40th. Okay. And I'm going to stop here and write up the solution. So this will be Y of X. The first few terms will be A0 plus A1X. And then A2 is 1 half A0 X squared. And then 1 sixth A0 plus 1 sixth A1 X cubed plus 1 24th. I'm going to write the A0s first. 1 24th A0 plus 1 12th A1 X to the fourth. And then I didn't combine these together. That's something I want to do. So uh, 1 1 20th plus 1 4 40th. So this is actually 3 1 20th. So this is uh, 4 1 20th A0 plus 1 1 20th A1. And this 4 over 120 is, of course, 1 over 30. So this will be, excuse me again. one thirtieth A0 plus 1 1 20th A1 x to the fifth plus ellipsis. Goes on. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this thing in terms of uh, a linear combination of two solutions. This will give us our generic homogeneous solution. Remember that what we're doing in this is getting uh, solutions to the homogeneous equation, right? Okay, 
So uh, all the A0 terms, I'll factor out in A0 and I'll get one plus one half x squared plus one sixth x cubed plus one twenty fourth x to the fourth plus one thirtieth x to the fifth plus so on plus a one times x plus one sixth x cubed plus one twelfth x to the fourth plus one one twentieth x to the fifth and so on. So this has given me uh, two fundamental solutions. I've got a fundamental set of solutions. We can call this one y1 or y0, whatever, however you want to number that. This is the other one. The one that you will give a different name from the first one so that you can refer to them. Not what I meant to do. Let me, okay. So that's an interesting uh, twist on this problem. Now, in the last few minutes that we have, what should I do? It's 17 minutes. What should we do? Um, we can try to squeeze in another problem. This is, like I said, this is the last that we're going to do with. Um, With this, the book, and by the book, I'm, I mean Voice and De Prima. In case you missed my rant about the textbooks that were provided to me for this class, the free ones. Not happy with them. So I switched back to the classic Voice and De Prima. I got this off the internet. It's, you know, there are copies of old editions all over the internet, and they have really good problems in the back. So this is the end of the chapter or the end of the section. You can work problems. If you want, you can send them to me. Um, now here's one. I just pick one at random. Uh, let's say, okay, this one looks hard. Let's do this one. X, Y, double prime plus Y prime plus x, y equals zero. Because the examples, they don't, they're not doing anything like this, right? They leave this to you. Try this out on your own. I think there's something like this on the web board. Now we have to be, oh, actually, hmm, this is gonna be a little bit of work. We notice one thing right here. Our capital P of x is x. And so zero, is not an ordinary point, is a singular point. Important thing to notice. So this problem, they actually give us where should we center the solution? They want it centered at one because one will be an ordinary point. We divide by one, dividing by one is, is okay. Dividing by zero is not. So what do we get? X times n equals zero to infinity, n plus two times n plus one, a n plus two, x to the n. I remember I've already done the rewriting step here. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. So let's do the rewriting step in one in one step. No, it's going to take a couple. Okay, so x n equals zero to infinity. Also, I noticed a mistake that I made. So this is centered at one, so our our uh, powers need to be at x minus one. We'll come back to that. Now, uh, this one goes from n equals so n equals zero to infinity. N plus one, a n plus one x minus one, the n. So I've gone ahead and got those to uh, the generic term is x minus one to the n. And then plus x times n equals zero to infinity. 
a n x n x minus one to the n. All right. Now, first thing we have to do, get this x in, into a x minus one form. So that's going to be, uh, this is going to be, well, this is going to become x minus one plus one. So I'm just going to go ahead and distribute that out, save a little time. n equals zero to infinity, n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two, x minus one to the n plus one. So that's this one. n equals zero to infinity, n plus two, plus one, a n plus two, x minus one to the n plus n equals zero to infinity, plus one, a n plus one, x minus one, to the n plus do the same thing here, get an extra x minus one. and then an extra copy of the whole series. Now these are the two that I'm gonna to have to rewrite again, whereas, try something a little sneaky. In this one, let's, let's do a different color. And these three, these three are fine. Well, let's do these, uh, these two first. So it's going to start from any n plus one. So we just need to reduce uh, n, n plus one down to n. And so we start from n equals one. And so now let's just combine all this together. n plus two, n plus one. A n plus two plus, uh, sorry, sorry, what? We got to do the rewriting. N plus one times n, a n plus one plus a n minus one. All right. We need all of our n plus ones to go down to n. So this n becomes n minus one. This n plus two becomes n plus one. This n plus two becomes n, and this n plus, or that n plus one becomes n, and that n plus two becomes n. Okay. X minus one to the n. I'm doing this, this quick maths. Okay. Now the next one, uh, if we gather all this stuff together, it's going to be n plus two times n plus one. A n plus two plus plus one, a n plus one, a n x minus one n, equals zero. I wonder if that's going to be visible on the video. The things you can't see, that's an exercise for you. All right, so uh, let's um, let's pull off uh, the n equals zero term. I'll do this in a different color for absolutely no reason at all, so that the first series here won't have anything in it. Zero. The second one, only the second one will. So this is this is my cats are outside the door trying to get in now. Two times one times a n plus two plus one times a n plus one. Uh, we know what n is zero. This is two a two plus a one plus a zero equals zero. So that's uh, that takes care of the what happens whenever one of the series hasn't started up yet. They don't all start at the same spot. Okay, from then on, 
we get n plus one, n, a n plus one, plus, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself a little space. And you'll see why in just a second. So, n plus one, n, I'm gonna do it vertically. n plus one, n, a n plus one, and then a n minus one, and then n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two. n plus one, a n plus one, and a n. Right. So that's uh, all of this adds up to zero. And so I'll keep this one on the left hand side and I'll move everything else over the right hand side. So I get n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two equals negative. I've got n plus one times a n plus one, n plus one times a n plus one. I've got one of them multiplied by an n and one of them multiplied by a one. So add those together, I get something that's multiplied by n plus one. So this is n plus one squared. A n plus one minus a n minus a n minus one. So I get a n plus two equals negative. We'll just pull that negative out front. n plus one squared a n plus one plus a n plus a n minus one all over n plus two times n plus one. Okay. I'm gonna do one more one more bit of re-indexing and then then we'll be done. The hard the hard part will be done. Well the this step will be done. Okay, so all of the all of the indices go down by two. So in plus one becomes in minus one. n becomes n minus two, n minus one becomes n minus three, n plus two becomes n, and n plus one becomes n minus one. And depending on your, your preferences, you can rewrite this a little bit more so that, well, Maybe it's easier to deal with, but I think this is pretty good right here. <laughs> Highlighter can't decide if it wants to be in front of the uh, other writing or behind it. Okay. Um, oh, I wrote n minus two. I should have written n minus three here. All right. Now uh, we have an expression for A2 in terms of A1 and A0. And just as we're always expecting, um, we're gonna have two arbitrary coefficients. So two things will be arbitrary and then everything else will be determined in terms of them. So A0 and A1 will be arbitrary. We'll be able to get A2 from this relation right here. If we went back and look at this relation, we would probably see that we could have got it here too by assuming that A negative one is uh, zero. Anyway, once we have the first three terms, then we can get things in terms of the, the new term will be given in terms of the, will be given by using the three previous terms. So once we have A0, A1, and A2, we can get A3.
So uh, let's let's look at that. So first of all, a two, just rewriting it. I think how much time do I have for this? Uh, four minutes. So this will be negative one half a zero plus a one. Right, just rewriting that. So what is a three? A3 is going to be n minus one squared with negative four times, see, that'll be, I'm gonna do a similar trick here. Let's go ahead and do the denominator first. Three times two, A2, A1, A0. A4 will be negative 9A3 plus A2 plus A1 over 4 times 3, and so on like this. And then we would go through the work of figuring out what this was, this is supposed to be equal to, and this is supposed to be equal to. Can we do that? We are doing an example here. What is it? What is it asking for? Seek the power series solution of the given differential equation about the given point x zero. Find the recurrence relation. Set coefficients must satisfy. Okay, so we've got that. This is our recurrence relation. Find the first four non-zero terms in each of the two solutions y one and y two, unless the series terminates sooner. Oh, uh, just a spoiler spoiler alert. Um, the uh, you know what? I actually find that term kind of annoying. Anyway, I just used it. The web work. One of the one of these this one of the solutions actually does terminate as a polynomial. So that's kind of interesting. Keep an eye out for that. Um. Okay, so I'm going to find the first four non-zero. Let's see, we've got a zero, a one, two, three, and four. That should probably give it to us. So let's see. Uh, a three, that's the first one we need to do. So this is negative one six times four times a two. So that's four times negative one half, negative two. And expand it out. Negative two, a zero, minus two, a one, plus a one, plus a zero. Okay, so this is negative one six times negative a zero minus a one. So this is one six a zero plus one six a one. I'm going to write this out. This is negative one half a zero minus one half a one. This one will be negative one twelfth times nine times a three. So nine six is three halves. Plus a two, which is negative one half a zero minus one half a one. Kind of satisfying the way these uh, fractions are working out. Uh, plus, plus a one. Hmm. So this is negative one twelve. And then we have three halves a zero minus half a zero. So that's just a, a zero. And then we have a1 plus a1, so this is a1. So this is negative 1 12 a0 minus 1 6 a1. Interesting pattern. All right, now we have our solution. Well, we have the enough of the 
enough terms to satisfy. So it's A0 plus A1x plus negative one half A0 minus one half A1x squared plus one sixth A0 plus one sixth A1x cubed plus negative one half A0 minus one six a one the fourth plus ellipsis. So I can rewrite this now. The linear combination the two fundamental solutions. So one plus now it's gonna be minus minus one half a zero x squared. My screen just dimmed and my thing might be about to die. Plus one sixth a zero x cubed minus one half a zero x the fourth. We'll set that back. Plus a one x minus one half. Oh, I already, already factored out the a zero. Let's get rid of that. Oh, that looks terrible now. So let's fix that. X squared plus one six X cubed minus one half X fourth plus ellipsis. So this is one half X squared plus one six cubed minus one six X fourth plus And that's it. This is our, what you might call y1. I would probably call y0. This is what you might call y2, except I would call it y1. All right, so I'm gonna call that, call it for today. I'll stick around for a minute if you have any questions. This is the last that we're gonna do with the series of series solutions. Next, we are gonna move on to A little bit of linear algebra, because what we're going to be looking at next is just write in. Let's celebrate systems of first order linear ODEs. So now what we're gonna have is uh, not a second order linear ODE, but a bunch of first order linear ODEs. And um, well, they give an example in the book, but I think this maybe, and we'll come back to that. That's not a first order. Okay, anyway, that's what we're gonna start on tomorrow. And um, that's what we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. And then we'll have the final exam. And then uh, uh, and we'll be done. All right. So if you don't have any questions, have a good day.